My name is Steve Todd, and I will be doing the next presentation on Project Alvarium, the future of big data on the edge. And this presentation uh, really builds on uh, what Jackie just presented. Uh, not only how can you get high quality data, but how can you measure that your data is high quality? So the agenda for today is I'll introduce myself and give you a little bit of background about Project Alvarium. I'll talk about the challenges with artificial intelligence on edge environments. And then I'll dive into a solution, which we're calling a data confidence fabric and how uh, we're starting an open source project to build data confidence fabrics. So just as a quick introduction for myself, um, I was a software engineer uh, building intelligent data storage systems uh, for 25 years. And uh, on the left, we have a picture of one of those storage systems, the architecture, and this would run inside a data center. Uh, starting in 2014, I began to study the value of data, especially for corporations or enterprises. Uh, and that led me to do some research into blockchain and how Dell could uh, work with our customers on blockchain solutions. And then in recent years, I've been looking at decentralization, uh, decentralized identity, uh, decentralized storage systems like IPFS, and decentralized ledgers like Hyperledger Fabric. And when I looked at these new technologies, I realized that more and more data will be analyzed on the edge, but these systems, uh, the, the, these decentralized systems, trustworthy data is a problem. So how could we learn some lessons from earlier storage systems to help us solve this problem? So here, um, we're gonna borrow from what we did for enterprise storage systems. So here I have a picture of some disk drives. And as data moves from the surface of the disk up to applications, it moves through a variety of trust insertion technologies. For example, RAID technology, redundant array of inexpensive disks, allows your application to continue reading and writing, even if there was a failure, one of those disks was inaccessible. You have technologies like load balancing, which allow you to uh, go down another path if one of the paths fails. So we built this uh, trusted data delivery mechanism. And what are some of the key insights from building this system? Well, number one, when we were able to deliver trusted data to applications, those applications help the business on the balance sheet. It helped them increase their revenues and make money. It helped them reduce their operating expenditures and save money. And it also helped them to decrease their risk, right? The more trustworthy the data, the less chance that they would expose that data and expose themselves to fines. But the other key insight is this trusted, the delivery of trusted data is implicit. The application doesn't need to verify that the data is trustworthy because somebody has went out and purchased an enterprise class storage system with all of these advanced features. And usually there's a dedicated security team making sure the data is trustworthy. So when we think about this paradigm, right? Moving trusted data to an application on the edge, that trust has to be explicit and it has to be auditable. So, so let's look at this edge problem. So I'm, I'm using an example, a retail example here where I have a store with a variety of smart sensors in the store. My company has written an artificial intelligence algorithm that it wants to move down into the store environment. And 
the belief is that when that application runs in a retail store and it's closer to consumers, there's a chance to give those consumers a better customer experience and increase their purchasing habits. Uh, similarly, there's a belief that when you move this application down into a store closer to the sales associates, they can operate more efficiently and reduce their operational expenditures. The problem is that the data coming to that uh, AI software is unknown potentially. And there's so much of it and it's from so many sources, the company exposes themselves to risk if the data is garbage, if the data is malicious, or if the data is highly regulated. So this is the, the problem that Project Alvarium is trying to solve. And the way it's trying to solve it is by creating what's called a data confidence fabric. So we've defined a DCF as a fabric. When data travels over it, it's always annotated and it's scored. So from the moment that it's born to the moment that it's delivered to an application, annotation and scoring happens. So, so this is the idea behind a data confidence fabric, right? That, that AI model not only analyzes the data, but it can analyze a score about how trustworthy is that data and how was that trust score calculated? So let's take a look at, we decided to build the first data confidence fabric in our own lab. And here's what we did. Um, on the bottom right-hand side, we're using gray, the gray color to signify that without a data confidence fabric, any sensor data that is being sent northward to an application has zero trust for a score. And on the left-hand side, we assembled different hardware and software technologies that could insert trust into the journey of the data. Now, some of these technologies are open technologies and some of them are proprietary technologies. So let's just move up the stack here. Perhaps there's a gateway that has a TPM chip, a trusted platform module that adds a digital signature to the data. That digital, that the fact that that uh, digital signature occurred can be annotated and the score can be increased by one. And now you have not unknown trust, but a low trust situation. Moving up to the next level, uh, we actually used a Dell product called Boomi to gather information about the source of the data. Where was it collected? What operating system was used? What type of gateway was it? And so that annotation was added to the list and the score was increased. We used an open source technology from VMware called Lightwave which was a secure token server and a certificate authority. This prevented unauthorized people from looking at the sensor data, which also increased the score. As we move up the stack, we, we stored that data using IPFS. And that's a storage system that calculates um, a content address so that you can tell the data hasn't been tampered with. And then finally, we used an open source project, another one from VMware called Project Concord, which took all of these annotations and the score and put them in a ledger. So that ledger can't be deleted and it can't be altered. So the end result is now your applications can not only look at the data and analyze the data, but they can also look at a ledger and they can see the journey of the data. 
and they can see a score associated with the data. So when we built this framework uh, inside our lab at Dell, we recognized that this is not a product that we could build on our own. We would need to build some sort of open framework that allowed for industry standard annotation and scoring. And that uh, project is called Alvarium. So you can see this announcement, um, which occurred over a year ago, about an intent to form Project Alvarium, so that people uh, in the industry could come together and build annotations and build trust score mechanisms as data was being moved across the edge from the source of the device out to the application itself, wherever it would live. So this is a picture of how that works. On the left, you have a variety of sensors sending a data stream. And as that data moves from left to right to gateways, to edge servers, potentially all the way to a cloud where an application is running, Alvarium is a lightweight API that allows for trust metadata and confidence scores to be appended like a sidecar that's riding alongside of a motorcycle, right? If the motorcycle is the data, the sidecar is really a collection of annotations and scores. So just in this example, the gateway is saying, I, I validated that the signature is valid. I went through a secure boot process successfully and I have enabled authentication. And these three readings and annotations are then passed along with the data up to the edge server where more annotations are generated and so on and so forth. So down here in the bottom right, you see the benefit of this approach. Number one, you can still analyze the raw data, but number two, now you have a ledger entry that contains a confidence score and a list of annotations. So what are the benefits of this approach? Well, now your AI software can produce measurably trustworthy insights. So not only can you analyze data, but you can also analyze a score and annotations associated with the data. So if the score is low, you might not trust your insights. If the score is high, they might be more trustworthy. And finally, over here on the right, being that all of these annotations and scores are recorded permanently in a ledger, you now have a great opportunity to uh, satisfy any audits and prove compliance with regulations related to data. So, you know, what we just heard about in our last talk, data quality, that could be one element of a competence score. Did this piece of data go through quality checks before my application checked it? Uh, all these things can be measured and checked for auditability during an audit process. And then looking forward, uh, the, the place where we really feel that this uh, project Alvarium can be beneficial in the future is the use of data marketplaces. So data marketplaces are on the rise. Uh, and what we're seeing with data marketplaces is the ability to sell and buy data using cryptocurrency or other forms of payment. And if we've been able to determine that the ledger contains a, a history and an ownership and a provenance of the data, the theory is that this data would be more valuable if sold into a data marketplace. So that's uh, the presentation for today. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and we can take questions for either of us in the chat or the Q&A or uh, online. Thank you.